Yo, yo, yo. So um, <clears throat> this problem, I'm going to go over a linear programming problem and how to turn it into standard form. So linear programming, if you don't know, is one of those things where um, it's mainly used for optimization. So you can optimize um, a lot of different things. You can you can minimize uh, whatever you, you're like whatever objective function that, that you want, or you can optimize, you can maximize different things. And this is used a lot in like business or finances or really just anything. So let's kind of start us off here. And putting putting this stuff into standard form definitely helps a lot. So one of the things that we have here is we have an objective function and it's we we'll want to minimize the subjective function, which is x plus y plus z, such that the constraints that we're given are x plus two y is greater than or equal to five, x minus two z minus y is less than or equal to six, where z is greater than or equal to zero. Right. So first off, this is a nice little problem, but we kind of want to put it more or less into standard form. So standard form, if you don't know, is we don't necessarily like the minimization problem. We like maximization problems. It's easier to maximize than minimize. So in order for us to um, to really kind of go, go forward with this, we need to really sort of change it into a maximization problem. Well, how exactly do you change it from a minimization problem to a maximization problem? Well. It's really simple. You actually multiply your objective function by negative one, right? So now this turns into a, let's use blue here again. Now we're going to maximize this function. Again, we're gonna multiply the objective, the objective function by negative one. So it's gonna turn into negative X minus Y minus Z and such that now, if you look here on the left-hand side, the first constraint has a greater than or equal to sign, and that's not standard form for a constraint. The standard form for a constraint is like the second guy here, which is the less than or equal to sign. So we need to figure out a way of how to make, um, how to basically flip the inequality. And if you remember anything from Algebra 1, um, one of the things that you can do is multiply, again, that equation by a negative 1, and you actually end up flipping that. Right, so such that we're going to multiply that equation by negative one. So you have negative x minus two y is less than or equal to a minus five. So the third constraint, x minus two z minus y is less than or equal to six. It's perfect as it is. So we're going to have x minus two z minus y is less than or equal to six. And we have this guy z down here where z is positive, is greater than or equal to zero. So you might be thinking to yourself right now that that's sort of the end of where our journey is at, but not necessarily. Why is that? Is because if you look down here, we have that z is greater than or equal to zero, but we don't have any mention about x or y. So what we need to do is we need to figure out a way where we can make x and y somehow positive, because right now we don't really know what they are. Right, and we can't really just throw it in there. Oh yeah, why not? X is X and Y just happen to be greater than zero. We need to make sure, without a doubt, logically that that's the case. So in order to do that, what I'm going to say is let's do something right here. Let's say let X equal the difference between two other variables. Let's just say A minus B in this case, right? And we're going to say that where A and b are both greater than or equal to zero, right? And same thing for y. So we're going to have y is equal to c minus d, where c and d are both greater than or equal to zero, All right? And again, the reason why we kind of do this is because we can't really just throw it in there that x and y are positive. We need to kind of make this so. So if we have two other variables like a and b, we both might make them positive. We can have sort of like almost like a linear combination of them to make whatever constant for x that we want it to be. All right. So kind of going forward with that, let's turn to let's turn to a different color. Now our problem turns out to we want to maximize. a minus, what is x? x is a minus b minus y. Well, what's y? y is c minus d minus z. Cool. Such that 
minus x, well, x is a minus b, minus 2y, well, y is c minus d, is less than or equal to negative 5. And then we have x down here, but x is really just a minus b. minus 2z minus y, well y was equal to c minus d, is less than or equal to 6. Now where we have a, b, c, d, and z are all greater than or equal to 0, right? So this is going to be our final form, right? This right here is going to be our final form. Again, what you um, getting getting linear programming problems into standard form is sort of like really um, sort of like a really big thing. Everything that you do from there is really just sort of algorithmic. And if you remember your row reducing and your linear algebra and the basic rules that go along with it, you can almost always pretty much find your answer.